we now turn to another of our senses, hearing. Hearing losses are classified as conductive or sensory neural, depending on the underlying pathology. Sensory neural hearing loss occurs when the inner ear or auditory nerve, that's the eighth cranial nerve, is damaged. When this type of hearing loss is associated with common age-related changes in the inner ear, it is called presbycusis. Hearing loss can range from mild impairment to profound deafness. There are a number of risk factors for sensory neural hearing loss. Exposure to loud noise, ototoxic drugs, especially with poor kidney function, aging, chronic conditions like atherosclerosis, hypertension, and diabetes mellitus, infectious inflammatory inner ear disorders, prolonged fever, Meniere's disease, head or ear trauma, ear surgery, and a family history of hearing loss. Prevention of sensory neural hearing loss emphasizes factors that are avoidable or can be treated. Measures to reduce the risk of sensory neural hearing loss include hearing protection around loud noises, protection against head and ear trauma, prompt treatment of ear infections, and limiting the use of ototoxic drugs, especially in clients with impaired kidney function. More could be done to inform people who are at risk, like people at rock concerts, factory workers, soldiers and police officers who practice firing weapons, farmers and people who engage in contact sports. The first sign is often difficulty differentiating soft consonant sounds, SH, TH, F, and CH. People with sensory and neural hearing loss can hear sounds, but not clearly. Clients may say that others mumble or they cannot follow conversations in noisy settings. In addition to decreased hearing acuity, clients may report bilateral tinnitus, vertigo, ear pain, or a feeling of fullness in the ears. The examiner may observe that the client leans toward the speaker, turns one ear toward the speaker, frowns as if straining to hear, asks the speaker to repeat questions, or answers inappropriately. The diagnosis is based on the history and physical examination and various hearing tests. The results determine the type of hearing loss. Findings of the otoscopic examination may be normal with sensory neural hearing loss. Remember to pull the auricle up and back to examine the adult external canal. Other diagnostic tools include audiometry, tuning fork tests, and imaging studies. What about the treatment? There is no cure for sensory neural hearing loss, but often function can be improved with technology. Management includes a hearing aid, a cochlear implant, training in speech and lip reading, and use of assistive listening devices such as an amplified telephone receiver. Cochlear implants are usually reserved for the profoundly deaf and yield varying levels of improvement. Some people can understand speech, while Others hear only environmental sounds that they must learn to recognize. What do you think the nursing diagnoses might include? Disturbed sensory perception, impaired verbal communication, social isolation, and role performance disturbance. Impaired hearing presents barriers in all aspects of a person's life. That doesn't mean the barriers can't be overcome. People who lose their hearing as adults are able to speak clearly and may develop various adaptive behaviors. Some clients learn to read lips. People with congenital deafness often use American Sign Language. Hearing aids do not allow clients to hear normally. They are just amplifiers. They cannot make sound clearer. In addition, people must be compliant in learning to use their hearing aids. The amplified sounds include not only voices, but background noises as well. New users should first wear the device in quiet settings while learning to adjust the settings. Later, they can try it out in noisy settings. Clients, families, and nurses need to know what to do if a hearing aid isn't working. Troubleshooting for a hearing aid malfunction should proceed as follows. Is it turned on? Is the ear mold, the part that fits in the ear, clean? Is the battery properly installed? Is the cord intact and plugged in? If all of these points check out, change the battery, and if the aid still does not work, change the cord. If the aid still does not work, it should be brought to the dealer for service. Hearing loss can bring about significant changes in your clients' lives. 
Some people deny hearing loss, which is frustrating for family and others. As a result, people just stop trying to communicate with the person with hearing loss, and that leads to loneliness. And think about the impact of hearing loss on people whose job requires verbal communication. They might have to change jobs. In addition to impaired verbal communication, People with hearing loss are at risk for injury because they cannot hear environmental sounds such as smoke detector alarms and car horns. Thus, the client must be very aware of what is happening around them. Part of your client teaching should be making the client and client's family aware of the special devices available for hearing impaired individuals. Special alarm clocks, smoke alarms, doorbells, and telephones. Let's summarize some key points for working with people who have significant hearing loss. Be sure the client is wearing eyeglasses and hearing aids if available. Face the client and stand with the light source behind the client. Speak slowly and clearly in a low voice tone. Do not chew gum, eat, or smoke. Address the client's good ear if applicable. See if the client who uses a hearing aid can understand normal voice volume or will hear better if you speak louder. Enhance verbal messages with nonverbal cues. Assess the client's understanding of verbal messages. Use a writing pad if verbal communication is questionable. Advise staff that the client might not be able to respond over the intercom system. Use a stethoscope as an emergency hearing aid by putting the earpieces in the client's ears and speaking into the bell. A rolled piece of paper might also work. When clients have surgery, contact the OR staff about the possibility of letting the client wear the hearing aid. And finally, find out if there are resource people in your agency or workplace who know sign language.